here is an amazing question which tests your imagination and spatial thinking. You need to determine how many triangles are shown in this figure. Take a close look and select one out of four different choices. Choice A, 7. Choice B, 10. Choice C, 12. And choice D, 17. Do you know the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time and use as much of your imagination as possible. Maybe pause this video and give yourself 20 to 30 seconds to determine the answer. Ready or not, I am going to move forward and reveal the solution to you. At least the solution I found. And obviously, if you have a different solution, please make sure to share in comments. Couldn't believe it, but I counted 12 triangles here on the picture. Let me show them all to you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Did you count a different number? Please make sure to share in comments. And also please share how easy was it for you to solve it. Here is a very interesting question which may not be as simple as it looks. You're presented with the sentence, scientists consider something of gravitational waves the something discovery of the 21st century. You need to complete missing words and replace something in the sentence with one out of four different choices. Choice A, detection and greatest. Choice B, energy carrying and amazing. Choice C, experimental report and black holes and choice D, ripples in space-time and most significant. Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe 10 to 15 seconds. Feel free to pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, I am going to move forward and reveal the answer. As you might have figured out, the answer here is choice A, detection and greatest. Let's look at the full sentence. Scientists consider detection of gravitational waves the greatest discovery of the 21st century. To better understand the magnitude of the discovery, let's look at the definition of gravitational waves. Gravitational wave is an energy-carrying wave propagating through the gravitational field, produced when a massive body of accelerated or otherwise distributed. Gravitational waves were first postulated by Einstein in 1916 and were first observed directly in September of 2015. The cool thing about this particular problem is that to solve it, you don't need to know much about gravitational waves, but you need to know how to form English sentences. Hopefully you've nailed this question, reconfirmed your knowledge, and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is the frequently used question to test how logical are you. You need to determine if conclusion is correct based on the statements. Let's look at the statement. All soccer players are sports persons. And all sports persons are fit. Conclusion. Some soccer players are not fit. And you need to determine if this particular conclusion is correct. You have four different choices to determine if conclusion is accurate. Choice A. It's reasonably correct. Choice B. It is correct. Choice C. It's incorrect. And choice D cannot be determined based on the information available. Do you think you know the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe pause this video and take another look at the statements and at the question itself. Ready or not, I am going to move forward and reveal the solution. As you might be well aware, in logical world there is a formula. If A equals B and B equals C, then you can reasonably conclude that A equals C as well. We can look at our original statements as A, B and C. For example, the statement all soccer players are sports persons could be an equivalent of A equal B and then all sports persons are fit could be B equal C. Based on these two statements, we can reasonably say that A equals C, which would mean that all soccer players are fit. Our question though asks us if some soccer players are not fit. Do you think it is correct? Based on the information provided, it is not correct. So the correct choice here is choice C, incorrect. 
because the correct answer based on the information we have is all soccer players are fit. Do you have a better way to solve this question? Please make sure to share in comments. And if you're trying to get ready for the test and need additional questions to practice, please make sure to check out additional materials in the description section of this video. Here is the question which took me as a complete surprise. You need to determine how many squares are presented in the picture. You have four different choices. Choice A, 28. Choice B, 30. Choice C, 32. And choice D, 36. Can you determine all of them? Give yourself a little bit of time. Maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer. Ready or not, I am going to move forward and share my solution with you. And obviously, if you have a different answer, please make sure to share in comments. I couldn't believe it, but I counted 30 squares in this picture. Let me show them all to you. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. Did you count all of them? Did you see any additional ones? Please make sure to share in comments. And if you're looking for more questions like this to get ready for the test, please make sure to check out the description for additional resources. Here's the question from the real test where you present it with the sequence of number and you need to identify the missing number. The numbers you see are 1, 5, 17, 65, and then comes the missing number. And you have four different choices for the missing number. Choice A, 237. Choice B, 257. Choice C, 277. And then choice D, 297. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time. Maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, let's move forward and look at the final answer. To solve these types of problems, my advice to you, always look for patterns. And the pattern here is that the next number is calculated as 1 plus 4 in the power of n minus 1 in parentheses. And here is the number sequence. So let's look at the calculation of numbers in this particular series. The first number is calculated as 1 plus 4 in the power of 0, which is 1. Second number is calculated as 1 plus 4 in the power of 2 minus 1, which is an equivalent of 1 plus 4 and equals 5. Third number is calculated as 1 plus 4 in the power of 3 minus 1, which is 1 plus 4 in the power of 2, which is 16, which equals 17. Fourth number is calculated as 1 plus 4 in the power of 4 minus 1, which equals 1 plus 64 and equals 65. And the missing number is calculated as 1 plus 4 in the power of 5 minus 1, which equals 1 plus 256, which equals 257. So the correct choice here is choice B, 257. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to solve similar problems on the test. A lot of people ask how can I help on this channel? One of the best ways to help is to help other people answer the questions that they're getting. If you know the answer to the question you see in comments, please post the answer in the comment section of this video. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here's the interesting question where you need to calculate the missing number. You're presented with numbers 11, 44, 99, and you need to continue the sequence and determine the missing number out of four possible choices. Choice A, 111. Choice B, 133. Choice C, 155. And choice D, 176. Do you think you know the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe pause this video to see if you can calculate the solution. 
ready or not, I am going to move forward and reveal the answer to you as well as the calculations. And in fact, the solution for this problem is rather simple. You just need some creativity and energy to get it solved. My advice to you, always look for patterns. Let's look at the pattern for this particular question. The way first three numbers are calculated is by multiplying the single digits incrementally. For example, the first number is 1 multiplied by 11, which is 11. The second number is 2 multiplied by 22, which equals 44. The third number is 3 multiplied by 33, which equals 99. So the missing number can be calculated as 4 multiplied by 44, which equals 176. So the correct choice here is choice D, 176. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is a very interesting problem that you might frequently get on the test. You need to determine the next item in the sequence. You're presented with the sequence of large squares. Each large square contains nine small squares inside, and small squares are of the different color. You need to determine next item in the sequence, and you have four different choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Do you see the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe longer, maybe 20 to 30 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. Did you figure it out? Let's go ahead, move forward to get to the correct solution together. As always, my advice to you, look for patterns. And determining the pattern is key to solving this particular problem. What you need to know to answer this particular question is that blue shape moves within the row of the larger shape. In each row, blue shape moves from left to right, one step at a time. And once blue shape reaches the end of the row on the right, it reappears on the left. So the correct answer here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's a cool question you frequently see on the test. You need to calculate the question mark. And you're presented with the three-layer pyramid. On the bottom layer, you have numbers 8 and 2. On the middle layer, you have numbers 4 and 6. And in the top layer, you have numbers 3. And on the other side of the pyramid, you have a question mark. And this question mark can be one of those four values. Your choice A is 6. Choice B is 10. Choice C is 7. And choice D is 2. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time. For some of you, this type of question might be easy. But for some of you, it might require some thinking. So feel free to pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, let's go ahead and get to the correct solution together. As you might have figured out, the key to solve these types of challenges is always look for patterns. And if you look closely, each row adds up to 10. And vertically, values also add up to 15. So the correct answer here is choice C, 7. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Can you tell us how many questions did you answer correctly? Please make sure to post in the comment section of this video to share with others. And now let's continue to get you ready for the test. Here's the very interesting problem, which tests your math knowledge. You need to determine the speed of the stream. The speed of the boat in still water is 5 miles per hour. If the speed of the boat against the stream is 3 miles per hour, what is the speed of the stream? You are presented with four different choices. Choice A, 1.5 miles per hour. Choice B, 2 miles per hour. Choice C, 2.5 miles per hour. And choice D, 3 miles per hour. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. Are you ready? Let's move forward and get to the correct solution together. To solve these types of challenges, let's first look at the facts. And the main two facts are, is that the still water speed of the boat is 5 miles per hour, and the speed of the upstream is 3 miles per hour. 
the main formula to do the calculations is that the speed of the upstream equals speed of the boat minus speed of the stream. So we can build the equation. In this equation, x would be speed of the stream. And our equation will be 3 equals 5 minus x. Based on the calculations, x would be equal 5 minus 3, which is 2 miles per hour. Did you solve this challenge on your own? Did you have a better way to solve it? Please make sure to share it in comments. Here's the practice question for you. Kiara walks at the constant speed of 5 miles per hour. Olivia starts walking at the same time as Kiara, but starts 4 miles behind her and walks at the constant speed of 8 miles per hour. How long will it take Kiara to catch up with Olivia? And you have four different choices. Choice A, 50 minutes. Choice B, 60 minutes. Choice C, 70 minutes. And then choice D, 18 minutes. Please give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can come up with the solution. The answer to this problem is not obvious. But if you came up with the solution, please make sure to post it in the comment section of this video so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck. Here's the cool question that you frequently get on the test. You're presented with four different letters and you need to guess the word using all letters presented. The letters we have are W, O, B and L. Can you guess the word? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Ready or not, let's go ahead and reveal the solution. The correct answer here is ball, which is spelled as B O W N L. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's the practice problem for you. The day after the day after tomorrow is four days before Monday. What day is it today? You have four different choices. Choice A, Sunday. Choice B, Monday. Choice C, Friday. Choice D, Saturday. Feel free to pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. I would like to give you a hint. The best way to solve these types of problems is using reverse calculations. So do you see the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. Did you figure out the answer? Make sure to post your answer as well as your rationale for solving this problem in the comment section of this video. Thanks for participating and good luck. Let's look at the interesting question where you need to form the word. And you need to use all the letters and only use each letter once. You're presented with nine letters. Those nine letters are S, Y, R, C, I, E, O, V, D. And you need to form the word using all the letters. Do you see the solution? Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe 10 to 20 seconds. This is typically as much time as you get in a real test. Ready or not, I am going to reveal you my version of the solution. But my version may not be the only one. So if you see other possible options, please make sure to share them in comments. The word you can form is discovery. Let me spell it for you. D-I-S-C-O-V-E-R-Y. And the definition of discovery is the act of finding out or learning about something for the first time. Here is the sample sentence where word discovery is used. Scientists consider detection of gravitational waves the greatest discovery of the 21st century. Did you discover any other words? Make sure to post them in comments. And if you're getting ready for the test and looking for additional questions to practice, make sure to check the description of this video for links to additional resources. And now, here's the question for you to practice. You're presented with triangle which is broken down into three equal horizontal parts. On the left side of the triangle, you see numbers 8, 4 and 3 if you go from the bottom to the top. And on the right side of the triangles, you see numbers 2, 6 and one number is missing. You need to select missing number from four different choices. Choice A, 6. 
choice B10, choice C7, and choice D2. Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can come up with the solution. If you figured out the solution, please make sure to post your answer in the comment section of this video so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck! Here's an interesting question from the recent test. You need to figure out the word from the five letters you see on the screen. The letters are H, A, B, E, and C. Do you see the word? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe 20 seconds. You can pause this video to see if you can figure it out on your own. Make sure to use all the letters and make sure to use each of the letters once. Ready or not, I'm going to move forward and share with you my solution. But keep in mind that a lot of times multiple words can be formed. So if you see another word, please make sure to share it in comments. The solution I found is the word beach. Let me spell it for you. B E A C H. Do you see any other solutions? Make sure to post them in comments. And if you'd like to improve your ability to guess the words, you can play word games, read a lot, and practice crosswords and puzzles. A lot of you are interested and ask me, how can I help others? One of the ways you can help other people is by sharing the latest questions you see as part of the assessment test. And when you share, please make sure to also include how you answered them. Please share the question you recently encountered in the comment section of this video. And if you know the answers, please share them as well. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here's the test question where you presented with four different words and you need to identify the word which is misspelled. The first word you see on the screen is procrastination. The second is accommodation. Third one is corruption. And the fourth one is adjudication. Please take a close look to see if you can see the word which is misspelled. Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe a little bit longer, to see if you can come up with the correct solution. Ready or not, I am going to move forward and reveal the correct solution to you. If you look closely, you see that the word corruption is misspelled. The correct spelling is C-O-R-R-U-P-T-I-O-N. So the correct choice here is choice C, word corruption. If you're interested to improve your knowledge of word spelling, you can play word games, read a lot, and then practice crosswords and puzzles. Let's look at the question which you see on the test very often. You need to guess the word and you're presented with five different letters. On the screen you see letters R, A, M, E, D and you need to form a valid English word using these five letters. If you're trying to practice for the test, you might consider pausing this video and giving yourself a little bit of time to solve this challenge. Every test is different, but typical rules require you to use all five letters and the final word that you form should match the number of letters that you see on the screen. A lot of times, you might be able to form multiple words using the same letters. Ready or not, I am going to move forward and reveal the final solution. The solution to this challenge is the word dream, which is spelled as D, R, E, A, and M. Do you see any other solutions to this challenge? Make sure to post any other words that you discovered in the comments of this video. And if you're trying to get ready for the test, make sure to play word games, read a lot, and practice crosswords and puzzles. Here's the frequently used question on the test, which may not be as simple as it looks. Current time on the clock is 10.05 p.m. What is the degree angle between the hour hand and the minute hand on the clock? You have four different choices. Choice A, 75 degrees. Choice B, 80 degrees. Choice C, 90 degrees. And choice D, 100 degrees. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time Maybe research the clock, look carefully, and see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, I am going to move forward and reveal you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to share in comments. 
Because Clark's surface is a circle, Clark's hand covers 300 degrees in 12 hours. There are 12 5-minute sections on the clock, and every 5 minute, the hand covers 30 degrees, which is calculated as 360 degrees divided by 12, which is equal 30 degrees. At 10.05 p.m., there will be three 5-minute sections between hands on the clock, so the angle between the minute hand and the hour hand on the clock will be 3 multiplied by 30, which would be equal 90 degrees. Hopefully you've nailed this question and saw the answer right away. And if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to share in comments. I would like to ask you to participate in our daily assessment test challenge. I post new question every day in the community tab of YouTube channel and give you an opportunity to answer it and try it. And I post answer in comments next day. So please make sure to check it out to test your knowledge. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here's a very interesting question from the most recent test. You need to determine the number of squares in the presented shape. You have four different choices. Choice A, 22. Choice B, 20. Choice C, 18. Choice D, 14. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time. If you're trying to recreate conditions from the real test, you can give yourself between 15 and 20 seconds. This is about as much time as you get. Ready or not, I am moving forward to share with you final solution. Believe it or not, I counted 18 squares in this shape. Let me share them all to you. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. I hope I found all of them. Do you see any additional ones? Please make sure to share them in comments. And if you're looking for additional practice questions, make sure to check out the description of this video for the link to the ebook. Can I ask you to do me a favor? If you know someone who is getting ready for the interview or assessment test, please share this video with them. This is going to help them pass and get hired for their dream job. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here's the interesting question where you need to select the word which is opposite of the word common. You have four different choices. Choice A, trivial. Choice B, Routine, choice C, general, and choice D, exceptional. Do you see the solution? Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the answer. Keep in mind that during the real test, you can't use internet or your smartphone. Ready or not, I am going to move forward and reveal the answer. You can come up with the correct answer by thinking logically. For example, the opposite of the word common is the word uncommon, which means that among the given choices, exceptional is the word which is closest to meaning of uncommon, and which is also the opposite of common. Let's look at the definition. The definition of exceptional is unusual and not typical, which is not common. So the correct choice here is choice D, exceptional. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. I have a question for you. Have you considered subscribing to online training for everyone? We focus on helping you not just to get ready for assessment test, but using our materials, you can also improve your concentration, IQ and brain power. And we're having a lot of fun along the way in this process. Thank you for considering. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here's the cool question that you frequently get on the test. Kate has $33 which is only 20% of the cost of shoes that she would like to purchase. How much do the shoes cost? And you're presented with four different choices. Choice A, $66. Choice B, $99. Choice C, $150. And choice D, $165. Can you calculate the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe 20 to 30 seconds depending how well you are with math and percentages. Ready or not, let's go ahead and get to the correct solution together. 
The answer to this problem is very simple. $33 is 20% or one-fifth of the shoe's price. So the total cost of the shoes would be 33 multiplied by 5, which would be equal $165. So the correct answer here is choice D, $165. I wanted to ask you for a favor. There are a lot of people that you might know that would benefit from this content. Would you be able to share this content with them? Unless, of course, you're driving. Then you can do it right after you get off the car. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here is a very interesting question we frequently see on the test. A 5x5x5 five by five by five cube has its sides length increased by 40%. As a result of these changes, by what percentage has cube's total volume increased? You are presented with four different choices. Choice A, 274%. Choice B, 325%. Choice C, 357%. And choice D, 379%. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time because the answer to this question may not be obvious. Hopefully you've nailed it, but let's move forward and I'll explain you how I solved this problem so we can get to the correct solution together. First thing we're going to do is calculate original cube volume. 5 multiplied by 5 multiplied by 5 is equals 125. Now let's increase the side of the cube by 40%. 5 multiplied by 1.4 equals 7, which means that the new cube's volume would be calculated as 7 multiplied by 7 multiplied by 7, and the end result will be 343. The volume change in percentages then can be calculated as new volume 343 divided by old volume 125 and multiplied by 100%. The end result of this calculation is 274.4%. So the correct choice here is choice A, 274%. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. And now I have a practice question for you. You need to determine which item comes next in the sequence. You're presented with three large squares. Each large square contains nine small squares inside. And small squares are of a different color. And the fourth square is missing. And you have four different choices to choose from. Choices A, B, C, and D. Do you see the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. And make sure to post your solution and your rationale in the description section of this video. This way I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck! Here is an interesting question we frequently see on the test. Kiara walks at the constant speed of 5 miles per hour. Olivia starts walking at the same time as Kiara but starts 4 miles behind her and walks at a constant speed of 8 miles per hour. How long will it take for Kiara to catch up with Olivia? You're presented with four different choices. Choice A, 50 minutes. Choice B, 60 minutes. Choice C, 70 minutes. And choice D, 80 minutes. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time and think about all possible combinations. Ready or not, let's move forward and get to the correct solution together. One important consideration to help you solve this challenge is that the speed for both Kiara and Olivia is presented in miles per hour, but answers are in minutes, so at some point we would need to make a conversion. Another important point is that both Kiara and Olivia will walk the same time and we can put it as X in hours before catching up, because they started at the same time. In our solution, X will be the time in hours when they will catch up and meet. To solve this challenge, we need to build an equation. 5x plus 4 equals 8x. 8x represents how much Olivia will walk. And 5x plus 4 is representing how much Kiara can walk. And the starting point for this will be starting point of where Olivia starts. Since Olivia starts 4 miles behind. So if we simplify this equation, 4 will be equal to 3x. And x will be equal 4 thirds 
or one and one third of an hour. And now is the time to do the conversion. One hour equals 60 minutes. 60 multiplied by four thirds equals 60 plus 20 equals 80 minutes. So the correct answer here is choice D, 80 minutes. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. And here is the practice question for you. You're presented with three full expressions and you need to calculate missing number in the fourth expression. Here are three full expressions. 18 by 3 equals 27. 12 by 4 equals 12. 22 by 8 equals 32. And you need to calculate the result of 12 multiplied by 9. You have four different choices. Choice A, 34. Choice B, 36. Choice C, 38. And choice D, 40. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time because the answer may not be obvious. I'm going to give you a quick hint. Do you know why it's always two-digit number multiplied by one-digit number? The correct answer here is choice B, 36. If you figured it out, please make sure to post your solution in comments. Here's an interesting question which requires you to calculate the next number in the sequence. You are presented with four numbers. Three of them are visible and the fourth number you need to calculate. So the first three numbers are 1, 4 and 10 and you need to calculate the fourth number. You have four different choices. Choice A, 15. Choice B, 17. Choice C, 19. And choice D, 21. Do you see the answer? If you're practicing for the test, give yourself 20 seconds to recreate real test conditions. You can pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. Ready or not, I'm going to move forward and reveal to you my way to solve this. As usual, my advice to you, always look for patterns. And pattern in this case is that the next number is calculated as previous number plus number in the sequence minus one in parentheses and minus one multiplied by three. So to calculate the missing number, let's walk through the sequence. The first number in the sequence is one. Second number, where sequence number is two, can be calculated as previous number one plus in parentheses two minus one multiplied by three, which is one plus three equals four. The third number, where sequence number is three, could be calculated as four plus two multiplied by three equals 10. So the missing number, where n sequence number equals 4, can be calculated as 10 plus 4 minus 1 in parentheses multiplied by 3 equals 19. So the correct choice here is choice C, 19. Hope you found the solution to this challenge on your own. And if you see any alternative ways to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please give us a like and consider subscribing. Thanks for all your endorsement, support, and patronage. For additional helpful information, please make sure to check out links in the description. For detailed list of available resources, I encourage you to check out resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net slash resources. If you know someone who would benefit from this content, please consider sharing the link. Please leave the feedback, corrections, or suggestions in comments and all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.